Good afternoon, morning, evening, whenever you're watching this, but at the moment it's probably the afternoon. To tell you the truth here, only you can control your thought life. The Lord our God is in control, however he's not going to control your thought life, that's your part. You do your part, mixing with faith and the word of God, and the Lord does his part, and he heals and restores and I like that arrangement. Works for me and it can work for you. It's like learning an instrument. Um, you, you need to practice every day. So you're practicing thinking about what you're thinking about. You, you, you practice your faith. You get into the Word of God and the Word of God shall get into you. So I think it's time to start speaking to those mountains in your life and tell them about how nothing Absolutely nothing is impossible with your God. We read in Mark eleven twenty three, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. So your words are very, very powerful. One of my friends and associates, Dr. Michelle Strauming from Zimbabwe, um, she was a guest uh, some time back on our program, Spiritual Encounters, and uh, I recall she gave a testimony of, of dealing with a, a patient she had that had stage four cancer. And this woman um, was completely healed without medications. Now, my friend Dr. Michelle is a, is a practicing medical doctor. Um, we teach a lot of the same things we have for years and uh, kind of collaborate back and forth. But here she did, she showed her what was behind the disease on, um, th there's a spiritual component to all these things. So uh, she didn't have to give her medication, she didn't have to give her all sorts of pills, she took the gospel. It's free and all the side effects are beneficial. So this patient was able to change her thinking from entertaining the spirit of bitterness to entertaining the Holy Spirit of gratefulness. And as she did, her body responded by releasing healing molecules that, and the cancer just vanished. Glory to God. And we've got uh, numerous testimonies like that. I mean, there's incredible, astonishing healing miracles happening every day in this world because we serve the living Jesus Christ and Israel, the Messiah, Yeshua. And there was some research done um, on, on, on the brains of a, a fifth-year medical student who had died and another person who was a school dropout and they were exactly the same age and so the researchers um, doing the autopsies and they found that the school dropout's brain showed nerves with only a few branches meaning he had very poor memory development whereas the, the medical uh, university student had loads of strong memories which showed up in, in rich dark healthy patches where they study the, the brain scans, uh, photograph the brain cells. So look, the evidence is, is just amazing of at least in, even in the last 25 years is that as you think, as you learn, as you stimulate your brain, you're going to build a lot of strong, healthy memories. We are here to pump you up, right? So you're going to get some strong, healthy memories and that's excellent. It, it's, it's the more strong memories you have in your brain, the more efficient your brain becomes. And this means that the more you develop a nice, st stabilized branches of thoughts, godly thoughts, more intelligent um, you become. Um, the old IQ test, um, a lot of them, they didn't understand that what science is now revealing. The Lord said this thousands of years ago. See, when, when you go to medical school, they really ought to give you a, a, a holy guidebook to the supernatural. It'd make it so much easier. In Psalms 139.14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and thy soul knoweth right well. So many people mistakenly believe that your IQ was something that you were born with. However, the Lord designed your brain to be highly malleable. That's why you can be a neuroplastician. You can change things in there uh, without you know, actually having to go in with a scalpel and, and blood and all the rest of it, right? You can increase your IQ, your, um, just by, which is what you know the measure of a person's ability to learn, solving problems, applying abstract reasoning, critical thinking, and all that. So, 
all those strong positive memories you build up could be used uh, as good memories of information you can use that to enhance your life and the flip side of this is we need to deal with effectively with all those negative poisonous memories you've also built up those strongholds the enemy sent in there came with, with thoughts to merge with your own thinking all those negative strongholds in your mind now we read in, in second corinthians 10 to 5 casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the being to christ well a lot of people in church apparently just overlook that they're not teaching it for whatever reason um that doesn't we need to get back to what this means here how are you going to take your thoughts captive if you don't take thoughts captive they'll take you captive when you meditate on a poisonous thought like entertaining the spirit of bitterness um you uh, entertaining uh, unforgiveness all those poisonous memories are, are physically built into the nerve networks of your brain and and they take up actual space they take up actual mental real estate so your mind uh, um, as an as a you know your body as as you as you grow up as you become an adult basically you stop growing at a certain height and all there, but our minds continually grow new architecture in the brains and that's going to happen forever. I dare say you'll still remember your this life when you get into the next life because our memories in heaven may be cleansed, they may be healed. You'll have a glorified body, you'll be restored, but your memories aren't going to be erased. And we got the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke. Um, chapter 16 indicates such proof that the dead remember their earthly lives now if this was just a parable as, as some i think erroneously teach then the lord jesus yeshua would have not named the person lazarus he would have given some nameless person instead that he talk about listen considering that thinking is probably the most powerful thing in the universe after god so as you continually think that there's there's a continuous mind action um, in your spirit in your soul realm your intellect your emotions are extremely powerful ingredients over and above your physical body and your brain so please understand um, the thoughts in your mind are very real things and you just can't let anything wander in there and wander out of it um, you've got to take some control here step up to it and and let's work on this so when when you you know all those thoughts, they, they generate extraordinary force. There, there are numerous switches that turn on and off, um, like sing, singles that, that cause your genes to express themselves to make proteins. And those proteins together build you know, memory trees. So the thing you think about the most is going to do what? It, it's going to grow the most. So your daily choices are going to determine what those trees eventually look like and how they're going to affect your body, how they're going to affect your life. This is why the Lord tells us in places like Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to recall this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, therefore choose life. I mean, if you like, you didn't get the answer, he even tells you the answer here, right? Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So, I mean, you could forget about the NSA, the Majesty's Secret Service, the FBI, all these stuff. God is recording everything. He knows the innermost thoughts of your, your intent of your heart. So you've got to choose and keep your mind. Not every thought you, you have is your own. And not, so as you're making healthy proteins, building healthy memory trees, releasing healthy chemicals, or you're, you're doing poisonous proteins and into poisonous um, memory trees, because what you think about eventually becomes this physical reality in your body eventually it, it's going to affect you know, your health it's going to produce either health or diseases it's your choice here so thoughts are real living th matter and no matter what um think about this um, you should ask for a passport may i see your passport please? when i go in traveling internationally you know they always ask me for my passport they want to they want to know how much money i'm bringing into the the country and how long i'm staying so i think it's a good idea we can ask thoughts well how, you know let me see your pa if you got the right to come in here not see no thoughts just ever harmless all thoughts occupied mental real estate so if you wire something poisonous into your mind 
the good news is you can wire it back out as you apply the word of God in your life. This is why we have Romans 12 too. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, by the renewing, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So don't anybody panic here. Um, your spirit of fear wants to always project itself into the future, telling you, giving you feelings of dread, or what if uh, this goes wrong, that goes wrong. Well, what if it goes right? <laughs> so don't panic if things are not the way you want at the present moment. This is why we, we seek the Lord, not forsaking the gathering, the fellowship, the believers. If you choose thoughts that are poisonous and you wire them into your brain, you can wire them back out again. And at the same time, you build healthy replacing healthy re replacement thoughts. This is retranscribing your, your brain. So remember, only you can control your brain. Your brain doesn't control you. You do. So your thinking is changing the actual structure of your brain, so you might as well change for good. Listen, if you're not hungering and thirsting after God, you're probably full of yourself. So <laughs> empty yourself out. And, and, you know, when light comes, darkness is destroyed. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So go love people, even when they're unlovable. Minister healing and, and, and miracles in the almighty name of Jesus, Yeshua. And we'll see you next time. God bless everyone.